Hello and welcome once again to The Outdoor Station, your one-stop shop for free audio and video entertainment for the self-powered person. And power is the word of the day, as we have a video exclusive for you, looking in a bit more depth at the new Brunton hydrogen generator. As outdoors people get more and more power hungry on the hills, the demand for recharging your technology increases, and of course, so do the options. First, you had to take a handful of spare batteries. Then, along came solar charging with better abilities. This was followed by thermoelectric generators such as the Biolite, and now we have the hydrogen core generator. It's all very Star Trek stuff, and Scotty would be proud. I can he hold a captain! We recently had Andy Weller in from Rosca, the UK distributors for Brunton products, discussing their solar charging units. I was unable to re release this clip until now, but I'm sure it will keep the debate going as to which power source is right for you, if at all. What we have here is the hydrogen reactor. This is genuinely groundbreaking technology, um, effectively a hydrogen fuel cell, um, but for portable personal use. Um, so this is a way of generating electricity for again a range of electronic devices but removing the reliance on solar power which as we all know can be very uh, fickle in the UK um, and allowing you to top up or charge a range of devices wherever you are and also critically to be able to do that on the move. So, well, the first thing, um, hydrogen power, it sounds very Star Trek, doesn't it? Very, very high tech. Yeah. Um, immediately question is, is this a canister? Is this, is this a canister and is it safe? Okay, well, let, let me just explain briefly how it works. What we have here is a hydrogen core. This contains hydrogen atoms, but in a stable, inert state as part of a, a, a metal um, hydroxide. It's a, there's actually a matrix within the core um, to which the hydrogen atoms are attached. So it's not like it's not hydrogen gas, which we all have um, you know, images of being highly dangerous, etc. This is completely stable and completely inert. When you plug it in, screw it into the reactor, you release the hydrogen atoms, which pass through a membrane within the device and generate electricity. Uh, there's no byproducts um, in terms of uh, smell or odour. A little, little puff there is the only um, thing that occurs whilst the device is working, which is a little puff of water vapour. Um, and there it goes again. And there's a little light on the end of the device here just to indicate that it's currently working. Um, we have a USB output to connect a range of devices to, and this is Okay, let me, let me just slow you down here. Let's first of all, let's get that in the middle of the shot there, so yes, wherever it is. Yeah, 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 okay. So that red light now has turned blue, which I presume indicates it's now ready to, to charge. Exactly. It's a standard USB output socket. Um, the the canister here is, is screwed in, but it's, it's not a canister as such, is it? I mean, actually no. holding it, it's quite heavy. It feels like a battery. Yeah, and that, I think that's down really to the, uh, the way that it's constructed. As I said, it contains this um, alloy um, matrix um, so it feels comparable to a battery. Um, if you think about a traditional D cell, something along those lines, yeah, it yeah. feels as substantial and, and, and weighty as something like Def that. Definitely. So it's a solid item. It's not a. It's not a, an item that's going to be compressed or dropped and no, damaged. No, certainly. No. And the the actual generator itself, although it looks quite a sort of a meaty, high tech um, item, um, certainly the technology is there, but it it doesn't actually feel the weight's not there. No, the, the um, actual weight of the device itself is, is a mere 146 grams. The core weighs approximately 94 grams. So the combined weight is, is still relatively low, bearing in mind the uh, capacity that it um, is able to deliver. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about capacity. Um, and uh, you know, what exactly is it capable of producing? And, and why should we be looking at this technology now rather than the sort of the typical solar technology? Well, as you, as you mentioned earlier, Brunton have been at the forefront of solar panel technology and, and will continue to do so. However, they recognise the limitations of solar power panel technology and particularly in our climate where our weather is very changeable, the ability to charge devices using solar panels alone um, can be quite tricky. You need many hours of good sunshine 
to charge even a, a phone battery. So there's clearly limitations there. And for that reason, Brunton have been looking at alternative power sources. And the beauty of this hydrogen fuel cell technology is that you're obviously not restricted by weather, but also you can continue to charge a device whilst you're on the move. So rather than worrying about a panel, perhaps a solar panel being strapped to a rucksack, this can be inside the pocket of a rucksack, for example, or even a jacket pocket, whilst you're continuing to um, hike, cycle, paddle, whatever it may be, whilst your device is, is receiving charge. Comparison for most people, what they have to worry about with pros and cons with any sort of equipment and certainly new new development technology, is where you have the solar devices where the the solar panel or the charge that you're taking in from a power USB is going into a, a lithium a lithium ion battery, which is a weighty item. Yeah. You've got no actual cell in this, no battery cell in this. This is purely the technology that's generating the electricity. In fact, the, the only weight really would appear to be the density of the weight would be to be in the, in the cell itself. Yeah. But for weight for against the weight of a battery, mm -hmm. um, you're looking at quite a, quite a lot more charge coming out of this cell, aren't you? Exactly. One hydrogen core contains equivalent energy to 30 AA cells. And again, uh, to give you another analogy, a single core would deliver approximately six charges to a typical smartphone battery. So you've got a significant amount of charging capacity within one core. And of course, if you're on a longer trip or your energy requirements are that much higher, you can simply bring extra cores with you. Uh, and when one core is depleted, remove it and pop a fresh one in, carry on charging. So there's no limitations in that respect other than carrying the required number of cores with you. The other thing to stress with the cores themselves is that they are rechargeable. Um, so when one is depleted, you can take that back to um, a retailer who um, provides the cores and exchange it for a, a recharged call. So this is all fairly new, the, the um, uh, retailers obviously taking this on board, here we are sort of mid-2013. Um, so they will have a device that will be a able to, to recharge these cores, or presumably sell new cores. Um. Exactly, e either option would be available. Right. Um, Brunton have designed a device called a hydrolyzer, which allows these cores to be recharged, um, and that process can happen multiple times, so the cores have a very long lifespan as right. well. So from a recycling point of view, there's, they're not disposable items, they're not like gas canisters, you um, No, you, you would use them multiple times, you know, right. we could be talking about three-figure number of charge and depletion cycles for each core. Okay, and uh, so what, I mean, you know, as you say, you recognise the, uh, the, the, the average UK outdoor user, but w w who do you think would be using a machine like this, an item like this that wants so many charges? Well, I think as, as time goes on, we all become increasingly reliant on electronic devices. And we've talked a lot about smartphones and so on, but this device is also capable of charging tablets, um, right. cameras. There's, there's a raft of devices that this is appropriate for. And I think anyone that's um, utilizing these sort of devices in the outdoors, whether it be for a, a weekend backpacking in the Lake District or someone traveling further afield um, who wants to be independent of mains sockets, and adapters and cables etc can um, travel with a reactor and perhaps a couple of cores safe in the knowledge that they'll be able to top up their devices whenever they need to. And what about, um, you know, is it, how durable is the item? Is it waterproof if a, if a kayaker took it somewhere remote, uh, you know, guarantees and that sort of thing? Well, the, the unit along with most Brunton products is classified as water resistant. Um, you wouldn't want to immerse it in, in water. Um, the great thing with the whole Brunton range is what's known as the U-proof guarantee. And if you're unfortunate enough or unlucky enough to break or, or damage or the unit ever developed any sort of fault, then Brunton will provide a free of charge replacement and that's for the life of the unit. 
So the bottom line technical question then, what should people, if they're interested in this, charging their devices, what is the uh, power that they, uh, they sh their device should be receiving to enable them to be charged? Because obviously, more powerful devices like the iPad can't be charged with something like the small bump. But this is exactly. obviously capable of doing up to a certain level. Yeah, um, again, if, we, if we're using the analogy of a, of a tablet, an iPad, for example, this one core will deliver approximately 70 to 80% of a full tablet charge. So it's not going to charge it from scratch to 100%. But again, certainly plenty to allow you to continue using a tablet. Um, and if we're talking about smartphones, you're looking at approximately half a dozen charges from one core. So would one core just do one charge of something like an iPad or do several charges? No, no, just under one full charge. Right. Um, the, if we're talking numbers, we're looking at approximately 9,000 milliamps within one core and a typical uh, tablet battery, um, you're looking at approximately 11,000 milliamps. So um, as I say, around the sort of 80, 85% mark as a, as a guide. Well, there is something else to discuss and consider if you have need of more ways to recharge your equipment in isolated places. Certainly as our reliability on technology gets greater, products like this will keep developing. Now I'm from an era where you relied on self-ability and a compass. However, digital natives have different needs and requirements. Horses for courses, and it depends on which one you want to ride, I guess. My thanks to Andy Weller for taking the time and to Rosker, of course, for this video exclusive. Until next time, folks, enjoy yourself out there. Bye for now. This machine will have eyes, ears and a voice.